We are going to hike up to the top. If you can't put your roof on, then you have to wear a hard hat. Oh my God. Whoa. That was so cool. Nice. It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Let's go. One of the best things about staying in Anchorage is the proximity to the things on Seward Highway. We've taken a lot of day trips over the past month and a half, and today we're going to take you along. It's going to be a packed episode, so let's go. We'll start with Beluga Point. As the name suggests, this is a great stop to look for whales, although we haven't spotted one yet. Our family enjoys rock climbing and Seward Highway does not disappoint. Just look at all these routes. So far, we have checked off three of them. Hey, looking great, Mr. A. First time on Rappel. You looking great. Today the boys learned how to repel and we're hoping that we'll eventually be able to do multi-pitches as a family. I'm taking Tweety Foxy! <laughs> You're taking Tweety Foxy with you? That's awesome. He's learning how to belay today. He's going to, he's going to belay Chloe. Pretty foxy. Let me see if I can spot it. It does look like it would be hard, doesn't it? It yeah. does. But maybe not. Today we are just taking a trip to Girdwood. There is a skate park and a park playground that we wanted to come check out that we um, explored the other day but didn't have like anything with us. So today we brought the scooters. It is a gorgeous day taking advantage of the sunshine. Missing dad. He's at work. We're going to go check out um, Bird Creek next and have a little picnic and then um, take the bird to, bird to gird trail. We are on the bird to gird trail trying our hand at uh, roller skating slash rollerblading and yes I should be wearing a helmet I did not have one in my Jeep unfortunately you did not come prepared so anyhow there are some hills here and downhill really scares Chloe and I the boys are all like yeah Chloe and I are like oh my gosh there's not very many places to bail anyways things to do along Seward Highway rollerblade bike ride whale watch Climb! <laughs> Everything you could want to do outdoors is next to Seward Highway. Let's continue and head on toward the town of Girdwood, home to the Alieska Resort. <laughs> we are going to hike up to the top. Where the tram goes because we're cheap. <coughs> we can ride the tram for free down. It's two miles up there. Two miles uphill. Think the we kids, can do it? The kids are thrilled. <laughs> yeah, the kids are like, what? We're, we're, we're doing what? But we're going to earn our lunch. We're going to have fish and chips at the top with an incredible view, and then we're going to ride the tram down. 
It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Let's go. Gotta unload this thing. <laughs> It's only flat for a little while. Whoa, don't touch them. What do you think? Are you already tired? Me too. So is she. So tired already. I think we're still on the flat part though. We're on no. the part that looks like a road. We've gone 0.4 miles. <laughs> we're gonna make it and we're gonna save $125. <laughs> That's my motivation. I stopped here to take a quick look at this plant. This is the fireweed, which has lots of fun stories about it to Alaskans that I've learned. And one thing I've been told at work by some of the locals is that you can tell when winter's getting close by how the fireweed blooms. When the blooms get towards the top of the plant, that's when winter is closer. So as, as it blooms up, it gets closer. Apparently, like parts of this plant are edible even I don't even know you can make things out of it I don't know that much maybe you guys can inform us leave us a comment below and tell us if what you make out of these plants Tweety Foxy has hiked really well, hasn't she? Yep. In her little dress. If this was a nice slope with like a nice You want to sled you want to sled down area. it? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'd sled down this. What do you think so far, hon? <laughs> Let me interview you at the most inconvenient time. I cannot breathe enough to tell you. <laughs> it sure is pretty. All the glaciers out here. What do you think, little miss? Well, I want to hike more. All right. <laughs> we made it! We made it! We made it! <laughs> we made it! <laughs> I think we had a 2,000 foot elevation gain and we went like 2.4 miles. I burned 1,050 calories. I think John burned even more than that, but we promptly refueled with fish and chips. And we have a beautiful view of Turnigan Arm. Something that's kind of neat, we ate at Bortide Cafe. And I didn't know what Bortides were before we got here. The, the boar tide is when the tide starts to come back into the arm and in some places the tide can get the initial wave that comes in can be high enough to surf and it's actually a thing here. <laughs> right now the tide is really out. It would be really great if we could time it so we could see the boar tide but I don't know where, how to figure that out. <laughs> Hey, Chloe, you having fun? I'm scared. Don't be scared. That was totally worth the hike, you guys. If you want to save a few bucks, totally worth the hike. Wow, that's incredible um, that we hiked that whole thing. We, we're here at the car again, <laughs> and I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, we're we're sleep. We hiked that whole thing. And it's incredible to just look up and be like, that's where you huh, were. That's where we were. Yeah. You hoofed it, hoofed it all the way up there. Moving on down the road, our next stop will turn us down Portage Glacier Road as we make our way toward Whittier. 
but first, a cruise around the lake to see Portage Glacier. We had come once before, but the fog was so dense that we couldn't see anything. And on a day like today, we just couldn't miss the opportunity to get out on the cloudy, teal glacier water. We got the top down now. Well, sunshine, the two top. The tea top. So Kristen's all blown out because she's in her much needed sunshine. Yes, I'm getting my vitamins right now. Yep, yep. Um, that was really cool. I thought that it was well worth it. I know the kids were kind of a little bored, but you know. I, we, we thought it was impressive. Yeah, and if you're looking for a less expensive thing for you to do it with your family, we had a coupon for five dollars off each person and two two fifty off the kids. So five dollars off adults, two fifty off kids. So it was about twenty dollars off ish, and it only cost us like one hundred and fifty bucks. It was an hour long cruise. If you take one on the ocean in the Prince William Sound or in yeah, Resurrection expect, Bay, expect to pay a lot you're gonna more. pay like two hundred dollars a ticket, and it's gonna yeah. be like a six hour plus ride. So I think this was really great. We decided to take a drive through the Anton Anderson Tunnel and go check out Whittier. That's what we're going to go through. Oh. oh. It's a race to put on the, the roof because you cannot go with your sunroof down. So we're going to park and really rush and put it on. Ha! If you can't put your roof on, then you have to wear a hard hat. <laughs> so just be forewarned if you're coming with a Jeep. We thought it would be really cool to go through the tunnel with the top down. Apparently that's not allowed. I wonder if like rag top vehicles, like a, yeah, is like a rock, a rock just could come just through come it? through it. I don't who knows? know. Who knows? You have to share the tunnel with the railroad, which is kind of fun. And it's one way only, so they there's times that you can go through and they tell you what lane to get in. So we're in lane one. It should open up in two minutes. We were worried we wouldn't have time, but we had plenty of time. The two and a half mile Anton Anderson Tunnel is the longest highway tunnel in North America. Built in 1943, its intended purpose was for the military to transport goods from the Port of Whittier. Amazingly, it was designed for negative 40 degree temperatures and up to 150 mile per hour winds. It has eight safe houses inside in case of a disaster. It usually needs to be aired out between trips with a giant jet turbine ventilation system. The entire city of Whittier used to be housed here. This is the Buckner Building. It was built in the 50s as a secret military base and included everything a town could need under one roof. It survived the earthquake of 1964, but was abandoned in 1966 when the military left, and ever since, it has been empty. Some say it's even haunted. One of the things I really wanted to see that was on my Alaska bucket list was a salmon run. Like, and what I mean by that is when they're coming in from the salt water into the fresh water, up the stream, swimming as hard as they can. 
it's an amazing thing. It really is an amazing thing. So we're in Whittier today and it's just been a unique experience because we came to this little thing, just this little area just to have a picnic where we you're gonna eat something and sure enough, the salmon are running right below us. That was so cool! I want to go to the other side! So what we saw today down in the river was pinks, also sometimes called humpies. And we just learned, you know, all about like what the males look like, what the females look like, how they're different. All the salmon, as they come into the freshwater, their bodies change, the colors change, the shape of them will change. For example, pinks, as they come in, the males develop this like hooked nose that they use. It turns like once they get up to a spawning area, they dig out an area for the female to come and lay the eggs. And then the male comes over the top and fertilizes the eggs. And, and then they die, <laughs> you know. It's just a, it's a really neat process. It's somewhat awe-inspiring to, to see. So this, 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 a nice, uh, you know, gentleman and his wife were telling us that this is a very unique thing because this is not normally what it is like here in Whittier. And we, I, I can say that we have experienced that with Alaska too. These beautiful, gorgeous, sunny days like we have today are very rare. <laughs> Most of the time it is cloudy with some drizzle, that kind of stuff. So we just got super lucky today and it's just been great. at the tunnel and when we came up here the train was going was we were like basically right in line with the train so train gets priority and we've been sitting here for what maybe 10 or 15 yeah, minutes it's not now too, it's not that bad okay lane two lane two is go we're in lane eight we're lane eight okay it's time to make our way back to anchorage thanks for coming with us today join us next week as we take you around our hometown for the summer there are so many things to see and do right here in Anchorage. We'll see you out there.